the Keynote 966 trial was building upon the prior data that I mentioned that um, a checkpoint inhibitor, specifically pembrolizumab, targeting the PD-1 checkpoint protein as monotherapy had a relatively low response rate, 5.8% in, in the Keynote 158 trial. Um, and again, that's that's disappointing to those of us who would obviously like to see a much, much higher response rate like we see in the microcellular instability patients. That said though, it does tell us there are a subset of patients that that do have an immune response even without microcellular instability. And that when these responses occur, they do tend to be deep and durable and obviously worth trying to harness and achieve if we can. So the premise of the Keynote 966 trial was taking pembrolizumab, which has a small monotherapy efficacy, and then adding it to our standard chemotherapy backbone that we use for first line biliary tract cancers called gemcitabine plus cisplatin. Um, and acknowledging that both some cisplatin and gemcitabine um, have mechanisms of cytotoxicity that may be pro um, immunogenic in combination with a checkpoint inhibitor. There have been some um, nice preclinical studies that suggest that adding gemcitabine or cisplatin to a checkpoint inhibitor can increase the chances of, of creating an, an immune response um, down the road. And so um, the Keynote 966 trial randomized patients um, with advanced or unresectable um, cholangiocarcinoma or gallbladder cancer to either gemcitabine, cisplatin, and placebo as the control arm or gemcitabine, cisplatin, and pembrolizumab as the active um, treatment arm or the active uh, experimental arm. And um, followed patients for the primary endpoint of overall survival. And what the study showed was that um, there was a significant improvement in median, median overall survival with the addition of pembrolizumab with a um, median of 12.7 months by comparison to 10.9 months for the control arm and a hazard ratio of 0 0.83. And importantly, from the clinical perspective that you know, while you know, this median is significant and definitely important in, in, in and of itself, when we look at landmarks, we can see that the proportion of patients at 12 months and then later on at 24 months is preserved, meaning that this benefit so far appears to be quite durable. And that's what we hope for and expect of an immune checkpoint inhibitor response. So we're the, the great hope in the clinic is that we're converting a subset of patients from mere chemo or therapy responders to those durable, holy grail immunotherapy responders that can have responses that last much longer. You know, a median of 12.9 versus uh, 12.7 versus 10.9 is is incremental when one just looks at the median. You know, in the clinic when talking to cancer patients, I'm you know saying we're we're obviously not aiming just to be the median. We're aiming for you to be, um, you know, one of those people on the tail. And that's where I think back to the 24 month landmark that that's so important to say this isn't just something that happens at that 12 month mark. This is a durable benefit that keeps going, um, and because that subset of patients that it's converting from just a chemotherapy type pattern of response that might be a couple of months more, if we can get those durable immune therapy responses, that's a tail of the curve that can theoretically stay flat and stable for a long time if, if truly we're getting immune system, immune responses. And so um, the question, of course, in terms of kinetics, it's really hard to flesh out when you have a triplet therapy where the, you have Active drugs, gem, gem and cyst have a great have a response rate in and of themselves around twenty five percent. So I think the the when patients are on the triplet treatment, it'll be hard to flush out what is the component contribution of efficacy for each of the three drugs. I think landmark of time points down the road will be helpful, especially because we people can't tolerate cisplatin indefinitely because of neuropathy, hearing loss, kidney injury, and in fact, the trial design mirroring standard of care stopped cisplatin after six months. And that's, again, that's how the, the regimen is administered in, in, all, in most cancers, but biliary tract cancer in particular, we stopped the cisplatin after about six months of exposure due to the risk of cumulative toxicity. And so I think over time, it'll be very helpful to, we'll be able to understand a little bit more what is the pembrolizumab contributing and in which patients by seeing how the landmarks play out.